Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tim's Final Confessions. Matt is here. Hey, guys. I'm here. And this is, um, I'm, I'm going to say it's part one, but it's all going to be one episode. This is the first segment in uh, this latest episode, which is our review of an album that we've been waiting for a long, long, long time. Um, until, um, let me see, earlier this year, we were waiting on an abstract, shall we say. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> earlier this year. We It actually took form into something because... Um, a band that we have uh, long been fans of is Extreme. Uh, and I know I speak for a lot of people. I know we get a lot of fans out there because I've talked to a lot of people about this. And um, sort of like Winger, but even more so, a band that we'd wish put out more music. And there's been long, long gaps in between albums. Extreme put out an excellent album back in 2008 called Sodage de Rock. But like I said, that was 2008. They put out a live album, live uh, CD, DVD two years later, Take Us Alive. Nothing new on that, just a great live album. That was 2010. Now we're in 2023, and only now are we seeing new music from this uh, wonderful, wonderful band from Boston. <laughs> Extreme Six. And so, yeah, I'll get some formats here to talk about before we dive into the album. This is the CD. It's embossed, which is really cool. I just put the hype sticker on it. Uh, it's on um, Edel Music, which has put out the last few Alice Cooper albums, last few uh, Deep Purple albums, Ace Freely, I think. Um, and um, not one, but two things to show you here. <laughs> so this is... Um, the vinyl version of six. And I don't know how it happened, but I'm not going to complain. The red and black marbled vinyl of Extreme Six. Um, yeah. So not, not only did you get two copies of it, you got your copy like three days before it was even on sale. That's right. Yeah. So, so um, initially, put the order in and I'd also ordered one. Uh, Jex got me to order one for him. Jex and Will are to come and uh, had the CD ordered and sent to him. And on June the 6th, got two deliveries from Amazon. I ordered from Amazon. I've said this before, support your local record stores. I don't have one. <laughs> There's no record store in Canterbury. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I get two boxes. I'm like, what is all this? And I opened the first one, and it was YNT Yesterday and Today Live, vinyl and CD reissue, which Chez and I have already talked about in the previous episode. And it was Extreme 6, which isn't supposed to come up. Three um, days. <laughs> and on the 9th, and that had long been, you know, advertised as the release date. And... I don't know how I ended up with it three days early. I think somebody goofed. I mean, obviously, the stuff has to exist and has to be in 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 the, the, the warehouse prior to that date. But to have it sent and then get to its destination three days early, I'm not sure how that happened. I've always said that when you pre-order something, you should get it before the release date. But I don't mean way before. I mean a few days. Um, it's never happened. It's usually It's usually after. It's usually after people end up going to the store and buying it somewhere. I'm still waiting on it when that happens, but not this time. So much so that um, I'm going to enter something in on Discogs and they ask you if you actually have a copy because it's like, yes, I am from the future. I am Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan. <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyway, the main thing is it's here. It's, it's live. Um, as David Lee Roth would say, before your steaming little eyes. So let's talk about it. I mean, this this is a long-awaited album. It's the same lineup that it's been since 2008, or not, or a little bit sooner. It's the same core lineup anyway. Just the, the only changes in Extreme since they started recording have ever been in the drum department. They've had K Fig. I can never pronounce his last name. Kevin Fig Figueredo. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's been in the band for quite a long time. But it's Gary Sharon, Nudo Betancourt, Pat Badger up front and um they had put out you know by the time the album came out i think there were at least three songs that they released to the public 
Yeah. I only watched the very first one, the first video for the song Rise. And normally I don't. Normally I wait till I get the album, but I was so wanting to hear some new extreme. And I mean, everybody's been talking about this song and this guitar solo. So Matt, your your what were your thoughts when you know this first came out? You went into this band longer than I have, so you've been waiting longer than I have in a way. So what take it away? What do you think? Yeah, uh, with when with Rise, I was uh, completely blown away. Um, I think I uh, just for fun called it my album of the year just after hearing my first song, which is completely ridiculous. I couldn't help myself though. Uh, both Will and I actually listened to Rise and Rebel and Banshee, so those are the first three songs on the album, and I just couldn't help myself. They've got they're great songs, and they, we'll talk about each song, and they also did great videos for each of them. But I did notice that, uh, so they've released a fourth single, Other Side of the Rainbow. So everything they've released, one, two, three, four. Yeah. A little nervous at first. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. Rise blew me away like it did everyone else. But I made it a point not to watch the other ones, listen to the other songs. And uh, it doesn't matter now. I've listened to the whole album several times now. So uh, Nuno produced it, and I think he produced the last album too. Yeah, I don't have it right in front of me, but I mean, and it sounds good. It sounds really good. Sometimes self self promotion, I don't always, or promotion self production, I don't always agree with because it, it gets a little. Uh, there's not that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Unbiased. Yeah. Here, yeah. There, but uh, he seems to be able to separate being a member of the band and being responsible for the recording so it sounds yeah. good drums are nice and nice and beefy that was sounding one, one of the things i was going to say i think my favorite part this does have a slightly different sound than we're used to with extreme so you know if you're expecting that super crisp pornography sound with uh nuno's guitars right high up, this isn't really that but i love the sound of it i actually especially like the um, there's a, a thing that engineers refer to as decay of the sound. Like, so when you hit a, a cymbal or a splash or a crash or whatever, it doesn't just die off. You kind of hear a little bit yeah. of the, I really like that stuff on this album. So I, I think he did a real good job. He not only produced it, mixed it, engineered it, like the guy. So. Yeah. Yeah. And nowhere is that better proven. Then when it's guitar solo time on <laughs> Rise, and this this guitar solo has been talked about more than I think any any in recent memory. I mean, Rick Beato dedicated an episode to it, and he actually had Nuno on, and Nuno said, you know how many people have said to me, hey, you see, that solo's great. Rick Beato's talking about it. Uh, yeah. And uh, I love it. The band stops right up, and it's yeah, Nuno I mean doing what he does, and... There's a dedication inside this album to Eddie Van Halen. And I think Nuno says, you know, we, uh, you know, as the, 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 the guitar players out there, got to carry on that legacy of not, it's not playing flashy to show off. It's to have fun and be exciting. And man, there's no words that more apparent. I mean, he's always had that, that touch of, that, that unexpected, you just never know when he's going to break into a really fast run, but it never sounds contrived or forced. And the solo is just really, really cool. It's got enough melody that you get it in your head and you think how it goes. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's what we've been waiting for, right? Yeah, when their last album came out, I mean, again, it was like 15 years ago. It's not like Nuno's changed styles or, or really learned new techniques that it's so different, but you know, just 15 years ago, he almost couldn't get arrested with that last album. And those singles came and gone. But now with, uh, especially with social media, like you said, with Beato, like people were really talking about Rise and this album and getting excited for it. And we're talking about you know, them having like millions of views on YouTube a few days of that video, Rise. So that was pretty unexpected, I think. Yeah, and also, I mean, YouTube was a couple years old when So Dies to Rock came out. It was still kind of in its infancy. Uh, 
the the album was not on any kind of label that I it's the only thing I have on open e records. I have no idea if that label even exists now. I don't think it does. Uh, I'd really like to see that album get reissued because I know there are people there are people we know quite well that don't have that album that didn't know about it when it came out and it's really expensive to buy now. And what you're buying is taking a chance on the used CD. Yeah. Um, would love to see it get a wider reissue. Would love to see a vinyl issue of it. Yeah. And it was a good album, but it just didn't stand a chance because it was independently released. At least now they're on this, this EDL um, or EDL rec EDEL records, which at least seems to have some, um, I think if you delve down deep enough, it's ultimately distributed by Sony. So at least, they got a chance at getting this the album out into stores into record stores and widely available and not just available for a short time but yeah uh people are talking about it and i i think there's an appetite for this type of music again i never lost it but it's 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 really cool to see other people getting excited about the fact that first first and foremost none of that would matter if they didn't have a good song around it and it is it's a good catchy song Gary Sharon doesn't age. His voice sounds as good as it ever did. Um, it's heavy, but it's catchy. It doesn't have any of that. This song in particular, I don't hear any of that extreme funk in it. No, it's just it's just drivingly heavy. Uh, it's not Metallica heavy, but it's just it's just in your face and it doesn't let up. And uh, nor does the next song hashtag Rebel. Now this is a new one to me. Once once I got past Rise, all this new album I was hearing for the first time. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it just picks up where uh, Rise left off. I am noticing, though, uh, this is an album where uh, you see quite a few co-writes on these songs. Uh, Rebel was written by Nuno Betancourt, Gary Sharon, And then I had to look this person up, Jordan Ferreira. Um, he's got a really small following, but he kind of reminds me of like an Andrew Watt, like a really young guy, uh, really super into some of the classic 70s sounding guitar he plays this like um like an acrylic see-through guitar he's got wild hair and he's I'm, I'm not sure how um how he came into contact with nuno but i can definitely i went and watched some of his videos and i can hear his little guitar sound influence on songs like rebel yeah yeah there's a lot of co-writes on this album and they aren't your typical co-write names like you don't yeah. know a lot of them and, and he figures in on a few songs in this album. Uh, this song's also co-written by someone named M. Dennis or Denis. I wasn't able to find any information on them yet, but there are a few others that we can talk about, talk about later, too. Yeah. Next song I really, really like, uh, Banshee. Now, I don't know what I was expecting the... Um, I don't know what I was expecting the, the, the hook to this to be, but it wasn't the whole she band she she okay. scream. I, I I wasn't. I don't know what I was expecting. But that wasn't it. I'm like, that's oh, cool. It's a it's um another heavy one. Now I'm gonna take a little guess here. So I told you both Will and I uh, excitedly listened to the first three songs. Um, yeah. This mentioned to Will had kind of like a little Aerosmithy groove in the in the in the main parts of the song. And then I, I, that riff kind of reminds me of a little Stone Temple, Stone Temple Pilots thing. But I think this is going to be maybe Will's favorite album. So we'll see. see if ah. Think, but yeah. Stay and, tuned to the end to find out. Yeah. <laughs> and Pat Badger has his first writing on this album on Banshee too. So That's pretty crazy after all this, all this time. Um, and then uh, the latest thing that they've put out um a little a little mellower for other side of the rainbow we get a little uh i mean yeah. it, one of the things that makes extreme great is their their acoustic stuff right this has got that but it's not this is not an all i mean there's drums in this it's this this is a this is just an acoustic rock song it's really nice yeah beautiful song uh yeah. and court and shrone uh strictly wrote on this yeah this one's a good one um we kind yeah, of follow go ahead yeah we followed up with a uh, small town beautiful we're already on to side two of the first uh the, the vinyl came with like two records so we're on side two yeah uh, the side of the rainbow and small town beautiful are the first two tracks on the other side 
And this is a really nice song too. It's it's more it's more of a ballad, uh, and they uh, it, apparently, according to this, they co wrote with talk show host Bill Maher. No, yeah. <laughs> it just it just says B, B. Maher or Mayor, um, and yeah. it's, it's a really really nice song. Um, like the lyrics me, to it, gives me a little bit of uh, he talks to angel vibes, just to maybe the tuning a little bit or yes, so. yeah. yeah. It's, you get a little bit of that and maybe it is an opening yeah don't know get your get your new no uh uh approved acoustic guitar out matt and <laughs> see what you can find <laughs> and now for a complete change of pace um yeah the mask this is this is one we've been talking about a lot because among other things we're trying to figure out who's singing it and we don't know i i at first i thought it might be kevin um but I haven't heard him talk enough and I poured through these credits and he's not listed anywhere as vocals. Like sometimes I'll just say drums slap, you know, comma vocals or whatever. So I think it's Nuno. I don't, what do you think? I think it's Nuno putting on another voice, but if it, like, if it is, he's done a really good job at completely changing his voice because it's a complete other uh, persona almost when you when you it's you know it, it, what it, the, when i first started listening to it it kind of reminds me of and only because it's a recent album and i've been you know we've all been listening to it a lot it, it, from winger seven is the song it's okay when reb takes a break yeah try to dance yeah, well, we're so, and because it sounds so completely different than the, the vocal sound you're used to but this one is we're all sinners we're all saints like so I don't think it's Gary. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's Gary because he's so distinct. I think you could still hear a little bit of maybe it is, but I think you're right. It could be Nuno. Yeah. But There's it's an... it's it, 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 it's it's basically you know take off the mask or rip off your mask and show me who you are. It's you know it's kind of self explanatory once you start listening to it. But it is kind of interesting that there is this this altered persona on here on vocals. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and this song, that song was co-written with another name, um, Adam a Healy. Healy. Adam, is it? I, I believe. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, next up, "Thicker Than Blood." This one is written by Nuno Gary and K Antunes. Um, what do you think about this one? Another one that I had to look up. So this has got a little bit of the. Um, do you want to call it electronica or? Mm. Uh, so I looked up this, so Kevin Antunes, a musical director, Madonna, Shakira, worked with uh, Cirque du Soleil on that Michael Jackson one kind of production that they did. So, and he's actually got a picture of uh, the album on his profile page. So I'm assuming maybe through Yana and yada, 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 that's how he yeah. got it. Uh, you know, yeah, so. because... You know, for those of you that don't know, I mean, if you're a big extreme fan, you probably know. Probably one of the main reasons that there's been such a gap between albums is that Nuno got this gig playing guitar in Rihanna's band, and that's got to be, yeah, you know, pretty hard money to turn down. Yeah, um, it's a song. heavy song, but it does yeah. have a touch of that industrial. Yeah, it's a bit repetitive, I would say, out of all the songs on the album. It's probably my least favorite, but it's not a song that I dislike. But I find that love is thicker than blood, like that just yeah. repeat. I, I kind of agree it's 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 not bad but it, it's not the rest of so far the rest of the album's been yeah 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 you know the, the check marks are coming this one's like oh it's okay yeah and um, if you're thing on the vinyl this one is the the song that kicks off on like it would be like if it was on an actual press on just one record it would have been kicking off side two, kind two. Of yeah and, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if they think of it in that way but i don't know um Next one's, in, you know, it's a fairly heavily used song title, Save Me. Um, yeah. This one's kind of interesting. Um, this one's written by Nuno Gary and, and that Jay Ferreira again. It's not one of my favorites, but again, I think it's okay. Yeah, I agree, Tim. It's, uh, you know, nobody told you it was going to be easy, so it's sort of uh, underdog kind of songs. and Yeah. Uh, next up, hurricane which you might think is going to be heavy but it's not 
Yeah. We're, we're back in acoustic territory again. The softest song on the album. Um, yeah. So Nuno wrote, wrote this with an E. Warfield. I not find any information on this, Eric Warfield, but when I looked up Warfield, there's Liz Warfield who has, uh, it sounds like, so they compare her to Tina Turner, Sade, and James Brown. Uh, she's por- performed on all kinds of like the Tonight Show and that sort of thing. Uh, it also mentions that she's sought out by musical titans such as Nuno Betancourt. So I'm thinking maybe the field and the Warfield are related in some way. Maybe he's a guitar player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know. Like Nuno would be in so many guitar circles and so many musical circles that, yeah. It, but it's kind of neat that um, none of these songs they, you know, you can hear extreme in them. These don't sound like song doctor songs. Yeah, extreme has never done that. If they've if they've co-written, it's always been with. You have to look a little bit to find the name. Like who who's that? Who who they write? You know, and it stands out because they wrote it with someone else. Yeah. Uh, next one I really like, and uh, I was I was saying to Matt prior, like, does this put you in mind of a TV show? Um, the song's called X Out, and yep. what's different about this is that it's got some really eighty sounding synths, yeah, it, like repeating pattern. And I and I said it made me think of the theme from Stranger Things. That's what it made me think of instantly. There is a t- uh, a tie. Uh, because in the last season of Stranger Things, even though it's out of time, but Play With Me was used in the scene. Oh, even okay. though it came out three years later than this season was supposed to be set in. But anyway, whatever, it gave them, got them some attention. Um, it's different. Um, lyrically, it, it kind of reminds me of something that might have been on three sides. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot I of really, really like it. I like it, and it's really, really different. I think that's one of the things I like about it. Yeah, a lot of religious themes in this one. A brimstone, father send someone, quench me from thy, my tongue, when worms eternal, and I'm crying out in agony. Um, actually, I have to admit, uh, I was so I first listened to this album. I got a chance to just drive around in the car and run some errands, and just me and on. This is the first song that started to kind of put me off a little bit. Um, I, I don't know what it was. Now I really like the song a lot because something about that that intro, the, the blah, 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 kind of annoyed me a little bit. And um, I was like, well, if you take that out of the song, how is the song itself? Like, is the song just kind of relying on that sort of strange thing or is there a lot of melody here? And there actually is. Like, um, Gary's got quite a bit of melodies on this song. So yeah. really grown into this one. And then we get, um, you know, probably, I think the last two songs are quite fun. That's how yeah. I describe them. But especially this this next one called Beautiful Girls. This is an acoustic, um, uh, I joked, I called it Yacht Rock, but it's not. It's just, it sounds like a summertime beachside acoustic. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of, um, you can almost hear steel drums uh, yeah. put on top of this, right? And like- uh, it's just... <laughs> It's just a fun little sing-along type song. And who knows? Maybe it'll become one. That would be great. Yeah. This is, I mean, if they were gonna, if they were aiming for a uh, top 10 single, <laughs> this would be the one on, yeah. on the album. Uh, and it's way- got it, it 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 it's heavy on Nuno on lead vocals. You hear Nuno more than Gary on this one. Yeah. This is the uh They've gone with some modern sounds on this record, and this is the one that sounds the most like a, a modern kind of pop song. So yeah, but it's not offensive. It, it's just it's just really good. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, here's to the losers. You know, it, it's kind of a you know kind of a a we are the champions type of song. It's an it's an anthem of sorts. And uh, I like the lyrics to it. This one's just written by Gary and Nuno. A winner knows what it's like to lose. A loser, what it takes to win. I, it's it's really easy to sing along with. And um, I don't, to me, it just it ends an album that you know I'm not disappointed with it in the least. What do you think of this one? This last song. I I really like it. I think it's a perfect closer to the album too. Uh, it's kind of like that. Uh, what's that saying? Um, you take a licking and you keep on ticking. So it's yeah. for the people 
Oh, you get knocked down, but well, you go yeah. up again. Not that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, here's to the losers. So, um, and here's to being able to, you've fallen, but you, you can get up. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. So there you go. Well, folks, that's, that ends part one. Um, maybe, I don't know if YouTube will put a commercial here. This would be a good place for it. Welcome to part two of the Extreme Six review episode. Uh, I guess the intro's already been done. So, Jax, do you want to start as like sure. your overview? And then we'll go right. song by song. Sounds good. I'll do a little overview. You do a little overview. Track by track. All right. Sounds great. <laughs> this is totally unrehearsed, people. So, yeah, 15 years, finally. 15 years since 2008, Sodad the Rock, we get a brand new full length extreme album. Um, and they've been teasing us for at least, I want to say three years. It feels like forever that they're like, oh, the songs are recorded. You know, <laughs> they're just in the oven. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it was worth the wait overall. Uh, as soon as they dropped that uh, first single on March 1st, Rise, I was like, whoa, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. And then the curiosity just built and built as they released more singles, hashtag rebel Banshee. And I was like, okay, I'm ready for a full album now. And um, yeah, it was surprising. And there's some things I didn't expect. And we're going to talk all about that. So take it away, Will. Uh, so for me, I guess sod ads or sod days or came out in 08. I was eight. I didn't care about music. I didn't get into music until 2013. So this is the first extreme album i anticipated i guess uh so yeah i didn't really know what to expect i guess i have the album here for the first time this is the first time me seeing it physical i didn't oh. care for the artwork i guess it just didn't seem extreme to me it's very planet of uh, the yeah like <laughs> six doesn't go with gorilla i don't know so to me, that was a little different. But yeah, I was highly anticipating new extreme music for me the first time because I just had to go back catalog when I get in music. So That's right. I guess we'll go song by song if you want to begin. Sure. So the album opens up with Rise, which was the first single released back in March. And uh, it just starts the album full force with that heavy guitar. You're like, wow, OK, this is this is what we've been waiting for. That's the extreme that we love, right? No, uh, no ballads. Not yet. Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> but the first time I heard it, I wasn't quite sure. Like, I liked it right out of the bat, but I wasn't sure how I felt about that chorus, the whole whoop, 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 whoop. You know, I was like, hmm, that's a little modern sounding for me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. But then I listened to it again and again, and that part grew on me, okay? I'm like, it's not so bad. I said, okay, it's a good song. It's a good song. It's at first, I was like, it kind of caught me off guard. But again, it grew on me. Uh, and Nuno steals the show, obviously, with that face melter of a guitar solo that broke the internet. Everyone's talking about it. You have reviews about that solo by itself. So yeah, I think that was a very good decision on their part to release that as the, the first single. It got the, uh, definitely got the word out, got the curiosity going for all the fans. And uh, they hit like 1 million listens uh, on streaming services within, I think it was a week. It was a short period of time. There was like millions of, of listens. So that, yeah, that single did good for themselves. And uh, I love it. I, I think it's a great song. Great way to start the album. Yeah, so when this song came out, basically for me, I was like, okay, Extreme is back. So yeah. 15 years, you could easily ruin it and just start, release like a whole slow album or do what other bands did and go like half country, thumb mix of whatever. After 15 years, like a lot of changes in 15 years. But like this was Extreme is back. Nuno's back. Can still play the guitar, obviously. Uh, Gary sounds great. Like the that chorus, I know what you mean by the... But I think that was for the catchiness aspect. And if I'm not mistaken, this song came out very close to the Super Bowl. So oh. Extreme kind of took over the internet for a while because Nuno played the Super Bowl with Rihanna nice. and then this song came out so it kind of like extreme is everywhere there was like you said there was videos for the solo there was here's the new album here's the release date 
this is coming out. So Extreme kind of blew up the internet. And I, I did really like the song. The solo is not really my style. I like like the singable solos. I know that's a weird way to say it. But like the shredding, obviously, that was just like, we're back. So I feel like that's what the first song was for. Yeah. And it worked. And I think the album should have been called Rise for that reason. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, song number two. That's true. No, you're absolutely right. They knew what they were doing on a marketing standpoint. It's like you said, they were everywhere. So they're, uh, they're not stupid. The guys from Extreme or whoever their marketing team is, they knew what they were doing. It was very strategic how they were everywhere at the right time. Yeah, but it just yeah. took them 15 years to figure it out. They were waiting <laughs> for the Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so now we move on to track two, which is Hashtag Rebel, which that's a title I don't really care for. I don't like that they put the hashtag in there. But I mean, you know, it's modern times. What can you do? Uh, it's keeping up with the heavy theme of Rise. It's very consistent to that first single. And um, it continues to rock. And uh, this is one of those songs you can't help but bang your head when it comes on. You know, it's, uh, it's very catchy. Um, and as the song progresses, I find it just gets better. It just gets better from start to finish. Um, I like the whole, ah, you know, towards the end. I don't know what it is. I like, uh, so there's some great, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when two people sing at the same time, the white harmonies. There you go. There's some, some great harmonies. Uh, you know, as for classic extreme, you can find those on here. And uh, the breakdown at the end, you, you mentioned Gary's vocals on the first track. His vocals here, it's like, his voice hasn't changed a bit, it seems. Compared, like, you, you listen to 1990 uh, Pornography, and then you listen to this, his voice is the same, at least to me. I find, like, his voice is terrific here. Like, at the end, where he just breaks it down, like, instigator. It's like, wow. Like, it just blows my mind. You listen to that on headphones, it, it's it's glorious. It's glorious. Yeah, I really like this song. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. It's great. The two for two so far. We're off to a good start. Yeah, and you mentioned the hashtag. I talked about this in our the Metallica review. If you haven't watched that, go watch that. Not Cheap yet. plug for Tim. <laughs> that I talked about punctuation in song titles. I absolutely can't stand it. Like it's not needed. You don't need to put punctuation in a song title because it's you can't say it. Like it's just nothing. I yeah. did look it up because it's the only song with punctuation. And I guess the song is for critics that don't confront celebrities in person they just do everything online so since it's online they added the hashtag i still hate it i think it's a stupid idea it should just be called rebel um it makes sense now it makes total sense though now that you mentioned that and i think of the lyrics okay i get it now yeah but yeah i immediately liked this song more than rise when it came mm -hmm. out i guess it was co single number two because this and banshee came out at the same time yeah um but yeah, Gary sounds spot on. Oh, sorry, guys. I forgot to hit record. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like this song, once I heard this, I was really hooked on the new album. I was excited for it to come out. I think this is the best solo of the, at the time when this came out, the three singles. I Because for me, it's more singable. It's not like Nuno Shred. It has like the melodic kind of solo um yeah i did really love the song when it came out and it just hooked me more on the album for sure and on i know and now we move on to banshee this is the song on six if you ask me is the, is the like will said it was released as a co-single and I, that was the one when i heard it i'm like oh okay bring out the album now i gotta hear this this song is fantastic it's outstanding i love it it's it's heavy and um yeah i was just blown away the van halen influences are just oozing here it's so van halen ass and uh it's funny because when when we all met to, uh, at the casino in april to go see the concert um kim mitchell and lover boy will when you showed up you were blasting this song from your car windows down <laughs> it's just like banshee and the song had only been out a few days at this point. So I had heard it, but uh, I couldn't place it. I'm like, what is that song? And I asked you, because I thought for a second, well, that kind of sounds like some old Van Halen. And I'm like, no, that can't be, because I know Van Halen's catalog. 
you know, front to back. That's not Van Halen. And I, I asked you, Will, what is that? And you're like, it's Banshee. Like, you're like, duh. <laughs> you know? and I was like, oh, of course. Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the song had been out maybe two days or something and, and you, you were blasting it. So it just goes to show how much we loved it. And I still, I claim it as my favorite song still on the whole album. Having heard the whole album now, it is my favorite. And uh, I, I could listen to it all day. And at times I did listen to this all day. I'd put it on when there was only three songs out. I, I would skip Rise and Rebel and put on Banshee and just blast it on repeat, basically. Uh, I find the intro is similar to Learn to Love with like very separate lyrics to begin and not like long notes to carry into the next line. It's like sing the line, end it, guitar, sing the next line, which... I love that and learned to love and they carried it through. And there's at one point he rhymes vain with heroin because the way he tweaks his voice, like there was just stuff that you could hear the first time you listened that made me so interested in the song. And again, just like, okay, we're ready for the album. Don't make us wait another month. Yeah. Um, but like, then you get into the chorus where you go from she, banshee, she screams, like just playing on the words and the sounds the words make and kind of stringing them together was extremely interesting. Yeah. Um, and then after the chorus, or the chorus after the solo, Gary comes in with banshee be the death of, and then he says me, and the rest of the band starts the chorus with she, and they kind of overlap and okay. uh, for some reason every time that part plays i'm like so fascinated by the creativity it took to write that and overlap them on top of each other and i never know which word to sing because whatever one i sing sounds wrong and i just love everything about the song the solo not as good as rebel but extremely good mm. the band sounds great and as a co-second single like i think this is just perfect i don't know i absolutely love the song and I could just go on forever, so I won't. Just talking about it, I want to listen to it. You know, like <laughs> you're, yeah, you're it's like such a, like heavy. It's like the right amount of heavy and like so much extreme and classic sounding, and it's just so good. Like it's yeah. amazing. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it because it's great. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so now we move on to other side of the rainbow track four, which was I believe the fourth and last single released so far, but. Uh, I didn't listen to it because I was like, at this point, I just want to, I want to wait till I have the album at my disposal and listen to it, um, which is kind of weird. I don't see this often where the four singles that were released are the four opening tracks, like the four first tracks. They're all lumped at the, at the beginning. Usually they're kind of spread out, the singles. So I thought that was kind of weird, but. And they were in order, like one, yeah. two, three, four. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I don't remember ever seeing that, but it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, so this is the first ballad here. And, uh, you know, while I prefer the heavier side of things, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's just, it's a, it's a switch after those three rocking first tracks and then you slow things down. But, you know, uh, they've done that before. Extreme, they always have some ballads kind of squeezed in there. So it's, uh, it's not unknown territory. Uh, certainly not my favorite. But uh, it's one that I mind less with every listen. At first, I'm like, ew, this one stands out all of a sudden. But the more I've listened to the album three times so far, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I mind it less and less. But uh, it's certainly a contrast in comparison to the first three tracks. Right. Uh, I'm kind of the opposite. So I was just so, I was listening to Rise, Rebel, and Banshee at least once a day. From the yeah. time the singles came out, I was listening to them at least once a day, which is unlike me because I want to always wait for the album, but I've never anticipated Extreme before. So <laughs> uh, I just listen to them all the time. As soon as Other Side of the Rainbow came out, I listened to it the day it came out. I stopped listening to Extreme until the album came out. I was like, wow, this song is like not great. I saw a news article that it was like Nuno's favorite solo on the album. And I'm like, is it really? Like I've just... And I just stopped listening to Extreme until the album came out. Tim is just walking around here like he lives here or something. <laughs> <laughs> there I am. Um, so yeah, I stopped listening to all the singles. I was like, was that really what we're releasing as a fourth single after these first three? 
but honestly, it's the song that's grown on me the most. Okay. I went from almost hating it, not because it's a bad song, but because of the three singles that followed. Exactly. And it made me not want to listen to it. But I feel like at the same time, it should have been track three to kind of break up the th- yes. three heavy songs in a row and then you drop off to this. I feel like it should have been different track listing. Yes. But the more I listen to it, I find it's more like heartfelt and catchy and I am starting to really enjoy it. I think the solo sounds a little bit muffled at the beginning until it transitions to like the solo. I don't know why Nuno thinks it's the best on the album because I would totally disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's nothing really in the song. I feel like somebody's hovering over me. Yeah. There's nothing really in the song that stands out as like, this makes this song great. But every time I listen to it, I like it a little bit more. Yeah. But well, that, that's how I feel. I went from being like, okay. And then the more I'm like, okay, it's, it's really not, not so bad. But yeah, the sequencing on the album is something else. I think I get more into detail later on. But yeah, the sequencing could have been a little better, I think. Uh, Tim back there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Advertisement. Uh, okay, so now we move on to uh, track five, which is Small Town Beautiful. So we end one ballad and lead into another ballad. So yeah. we get three heavy hitters, ballad, ballad. So it, it, again, sequencing. Could have been a lot more evenly spread out, but those are just small little details. Right, uh, and that's where I'm like, if it was Rise, Rebel, Other Side of the Rainbow, Banshee, Banshee. Small Town Beautiful, I feel like it would have helped. Yeah. Not saying it would have fixed it, but I feel like it would have helped at least. Agreed. It would have been a little more even. It, it, it feels uneven to me. But again, not saying it's a bad album. It's just the track listing, it, it's, a, it's a little different, but as for the song goes, I know it's not technically a country song, you know, in the traditional sense, but man, is it ever close to being a country song. You add a little more twang in there, a little more country style guitars. It's a country song. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I like. I prefer Other Side of the Rainbow. If we're going to compare both ballads, I don't care for this one as much. Uh, that being said, I love how Gary and Nuno, they share vocal duties you know Gary will sing a line Nuno will do the next line and Gary then Nuno I love that I love because I don't remember them ever doing that in the past I know Nuno's been background vocals but (laughs) Mr. Tim back there (laughs) the distractions so yeah having them like really sing one line after the other uh it's great their voices really complement each other and I dug that the song itself like I said I don't know how I feel about it just yet it's a little too close to being country but I like the whole Nuno Gary Back and forth. The first note I have written down is it's a terrible spot on the album. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, why would you put it right after your first slow song? Like, it's just like, I have no idea why they would put it there, but they did. And we have to live with it. But it's a terrible spot for the song. Mm. Secondly, I wrote some of the lyrics down because I didn't want to forget this. So at one point it says, no matter how far you get, you'll always be small town beautiful. Now, I think of that as in this small town of 50 people, you're really beautiful, but as soon as you go to the big city, you're just ugly. <laughs> that's what I understood. <laughs> wow. That. But then it can, confu- and that, that's for me, I live in a small town, so I kind of, this has happened before <laughs> in my life with other people. So that's what <laughs> I understood. But later he says, what's beautiful is that you don't even know. So then that's kind of like, she's really beautiful, but she doesn't know. So she's humble about it. Right. But then it says, it's hidden in your heart and your soul, which again, takes me back to you're beautiful, beautiful on the inside, but you're just ugly. Out in per- like, I don't know. Every time I listen to the song. <laughs> what, what he's saying, Jax, is that you're a small town 10, but you're a big city six on, on the best oh, place. At best. Like, I don't know. Every time um, I listen to the song, I can't get that out of my head. That's all I can hear. And on top of it being poorly placed, it's just like such a, I don't, that's, that's all I can think of. Yeah. Do I Are love you, the song? Do I love the song? No. Do I hate the song? No. 
Do I laugh every time I hear it? Yes. Next song. <laughs> oh, you're really right into that one. I like it, though. I love it. Oh, uh, it's just, I don't know. Every time, yeah, I can't not think of that when I have it on. Yeah, but I totally agree with you on the, on the placement. Like, this would have been a good closer, I think. Like, a slower closer like they did. Wasn't um, Wholehearted was the closer, wasn't it, on Extreme 2? Yeah. Well, I feel like that would be kind of, this could have been the Wholehearted of 6. Like, uh, to close the album, because it, it's a nice, slower closer. But, uh, yeah, let's move on to track 6. Are we, are we really comparing Wholehearted to Small Town Beautiful? That can't be, no, no, no. That can't be right. <laughs> No, 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 no. Do not get me wrong. What I mean is just the vibe of it. How they close one album with a slower, with their slower ballad. They could have done that here. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to move on to the next one. I don't think I'm, uh, I'm making a valid case here. Uh, the Mask. Uh, let's see. Uh, rip off your mask and show me who you are. Show me who you are. Uh, so after two ballads, the tempo picks up again. And uh, it's just a good song. I'm going to... Nothing more to say about it. I think it's a good song. I think it's because it's refreshing. Uh, oh, here we go. Will it brought his one. mask. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is the Hip Today single, in case anybody's curious. Oh, I love it. It's a great song. Don't mind but, me, yeah. guys. Hey, you guys are doing great. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, like I said, it's, it's nice to have the tempo back. After two ballads, it's like, okay, let's pick things up again. So I don't have anything bad to say about this song. I think it's it's okay. So here's a question. This song plays after those last two songs. When you listen to this song in succession of the album, does it sound slower to you than it does if you listen to it on its own? Strictly because of where it's placed? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like it would be different. If I were to listen to it on its own rather than in sequence, yeah, it would probably have a different vibe for sure. Right. So I feel like they didn't pick the album up. I feel like you played two ballads and then this song that's not fast and shreddy and whatever. So it feels slower than it actually is. Maybe that's just me. But it also could be because this song is the song that I like less and less every time I hear it. And I don't know why. I really liked it when I first heard it. And then to me, it just gets boring. Like the chorus is extremely repetitive and the exact same thing. And then it goes from your mask to my mask. Yeah. But all the lyrics, like, it's still the same lyrics. Like, it just is so repetitive. I feel like that's over half the song. And it sounds slow. So I just have not been liking it as much. Um, at, here, let me, I got to check my notes. Or otherwise, I'll have this all screwed up. No problem. At 2.10. I even time stamped it. In case people are extremely curious, at 210, I'll take the blame for all my sins. And that leading to the solo, the best part of the song, for sure. Uh, oh, cool. it, that's where it seems like it wants to pick up. But then the solo is kind of mediocre. And then it's just more repetitiveness. And it's not great. So yeah. that's kind of, kind of what I, again, could have probably fixed it with different placement. But they didn't. So I'm going to have to deal with it how it is. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought up the repetition because that, that will come into play later on. There's a lot of repetition uh, as far as courses go. And uh, something else I forgot to address about the mask is it was Matt, Matt, our buddy Matt Phillips in our group chat. He was asking, who's singing lead on the mask? I thought it was Nuno. Like when the, when the song opens up, but he has like this Southern, he's doing this Southern accent thing. So I'm like, is it Nuno? It's it's kind of weird sounding. I don't know. I also don't know. Nor did I look <laughs> it up or care to have any idea who it was. I just didn't look it. What about the record shop employee that's moving around back there? Would he have any idea? <laughs> oh, we covered that in part one. Oh, they already oh, know. They I guess we'll have to watch so, it. <laughs> here's the fun. It's on this video. Oh, wow. Well, okay, well, access it. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> We're out Boy, don't we public. sound stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on then. Track seven, Thicker Than Blood. Um, the tone of the album takes a sudden switch <laughs> with this song as Extreme incorporates industrial metal elements into this song, Thicker Than Blood. It's so weird. 
like it's like a whiplash because you don't expect it and then it's like bump 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 and you're like it's so it, all over the place it's a roller coaster ride of an album because you got ballads here faster songs and then industrial and you're like wow but for you know variety is good extreme they, they dare to be different and i you know respect i i respect that it's just i wasn't expecting industrial elements um it's still not certain how i feel about this song i don't hate it but um again it was just so different that i'm like i'm not even sure how i feel about it it might grow on me um Pete Pardo from Sea of Tran Tranquility when he reviewed this album he said how he found the chorus on this one repetitive uh and yeah I, I agree I was mentioning there's a lot of repetition well I I feel like it, it starts like you said uh, will the mask and then here on Thickers of Blood it's like, okay this is really repetitive um but one thing I've noticed about the album it seems to get better with every listen like I said I've listened to it three times and songs that I was uncertain about at first that I'm kind of like they grow on me you know um and i can see that happening with this song i'm just i'm still on the uh on the fence like i'm not quite sure but uh, again props extreme for keeping things different because you know we can't just expect them to release pornography over and over or you know three sides to every story like they're they're giving us something we haven't heard before from them and that's you know what that's i respect that so i figured i'd also be recording with matt which clearly didn't happen because you already saw his review for the Metallica review episode, he said everything sounds the same. Well, if you want sameness, this extreme album is not where you want to be because everything is all over the place. When this song first came on, I thought I blew my speakers because of the <laughs> distortion at the start. I right. thought my speakers were just buzzing. So I had, to, I had to restart the song to make sure I didn't blow up my speakers. <laughs> so that's the first point I had for this. Um, but... It's, I don't know if it's a distorted bass or a distorted guitar or both, but it, I think it sounds really cool. Um, it sounds like a more modern song, which, yeah, you can't expect them to live in the 90s or the 80s or whatever. So I'm okay with that. And unlike you, this song actually brought me back into the album. We had three songs that felt kind of slow. And then this was like the heavier... I didn't find it repetitive okay. because I, I usually repetitive and boring go hand in hand with me. If it's boring, repetitive, it's not as fun as catchy. And like, if I'm singing it and it's repetitive, I find it way more interesting than if it's just not entertaining, yeah. but I feel like it was heavy enough. And like the slow broke down solo, it's not like a fluent shreddy solo. I feel like that fit. The distorted sound so good. Uh, I really like the song, and I feel like it started to ramp the album back up for me. Yeah, boring. It definitely is not. I'll give you that. It's yeah. It's not. It's not repetitive. Boring. That's for sure. I'll give yeah. you. I'll give you repetitive because it is. Yeah. But I find it not as annoying as the mask repetitive. I guess if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. No. I get that. So track number eight, save me. Um, this song sneaks up on you because it starts out with these like calm harmonies and you thought, oh, okay, well, I guess it's another slow song. It's another ballad. And then right as you're thinking that, boom, the heavy guitars kick in. And it's like, it's like kind of like a galloping, like, dunk, 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 dunk. and you're like, whoa, whoa, what is happening here? Uh, yeah, like, I, I, again, I, the first listen to me, confusion is the key word. I didn't know what to make because everything was so different and just like thrown at you. And so the first listening was very like confusing, but by listen number three, I dug it. You know what I mean? I, 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 I dug it and uh, yeah, I like the song. It's plain and simple. So here come the hot takes. Everybody oh, here, facts. here comes the hot takes. This is a top 10 extreme song of all time. Wow. This might not even be number 10. This could be higher than 10. It's so good. Gee, I have, right. Boy, do I have notes for this. <laughs> so you go from like the slower vocals and guitar intro to the guitar, like the main guitar riff to the kick drum. And then everything comes in together. And it's just like, this is exactly what I wanted for 12 songs is this sound. Like it's so perfect. 
it's like prime peak Nuno guitar playing and like Gary singing absolutely kills it. And the three best individual moments on the entire album come from this one song. And I have timestamps to share. At a minute 27, <laughs> again specific, in the second verse, there's like a bent note to separate the space. It might be the greatest singular note ever played on this whole extreme catalog. Every extreme song ever. One minute and 27 seconds of Save Me might be the best moment out of all of them. Wow. At 2.25, 220, the drums come back in after being totally dropped out. And if you listen to them, they're slightly different than the standard drum track in the rest of the song because they hit four individual drums on every note instead. Amazing. Very, I feel, it's like stuff you can, I've listened to this song the most. Maybe 50 times since <laughs> this album came out. I've played wow. the song on repeat. Like, I've tried to listen to everything because of how good it is. The choruses are spot on. There's absolutely no repetition. They're catchy. In the middle of the chorus, it sounds like it's over. They do another part of the chorus and extend it. It doesn't repeat at all. Um, then you have the vocal part when he says, cleanse me of these lies in the chorus is amazing. Take me, Undertaker, take me. That sounds like something I would hate. If any other band did that, I feel like I would not like it because it doesn't really make sense. But I feel like they needed it. And it's perfect. I have no complaints. Um, and then the other great part of the song, at three minutes and 40 seconds, the drums die out of the guitar solo and then build back in while there's some like mid-riff solo build-up thing. I don't even know what to call it, but it's amazing. Every time I hear it, it's the best solo on the album by far. Um, then you got the, only the vocals starting in the last chorus, and then everything else builds up. The song is great. It's a top 10 extreme song. And if you haven't heard it, you definitely have to. Like, I thought Banshee was my favorite song, but Save Me is unbelievable. I cannot give it enough praise. This song is so good. By far the best song on the album. That's cool. When, when you said hot takes, I thought you were going to trash it. I'm like, oh boy. No, no that's <laughs> the other way. People don't yeah. like to say that new music, I find that new music now, do people refuse to say it's some of the best stuff bands released because you haven't had time to digest or I haven't listened to the song for 40 years or whatever. I don't have that because I wasn't around. So Extreme is still fairly new to me, like 10 years. This song is top 10. It doesn't matter if you're like diehard porno graffiti or whatever. I don't care. This song is a top 10 extreme song for sure. That's well said, man. That's well said. Cool. All right. So now that takes us to track nine, Hurricane. Uh, that's another slower number with the shared vocals by Gary and Nuno, which again, like I said before, I, I like that. I like that they're the musicianship here is is amazing. It's through the roof on this album. I will say that. Like their the music, musicianship is great. I love that they're sharing vocals. Um the song itself doesn't do much for me personally. Like because like I said, I listened three times and I, I find it forgettable. And what I mean by that by forgettable is that when it came out, I'm like, oh yeah, this song. I you know, I, I completely forgot about it. Um, however, if I were in a sad mood or more serious mood, I feel like that song would just hit the right spot, you know. But among like more rocking songs, it's kind of a little bit of a down note. But uh, yeah, that's it. Not saying it's a bad song. It's just, you have to be in that mood. <laughs> so first listen, I'm like, all right, guys, you just had these three slow songs. You brought me back with Thicker Than Blood. You played Save Me. Which at the time I didn't think was the top 10 song because it was first listen. And then you drop it off again immediately with Hurricane. I'm like, this song sucks. The album is a wash after the first however long. I'm like, you got to get rid of this stuff. We just sped it back up. <laughs> but 
since I've listened to Save Me so many times, the next song that comes on is Hurricane. So I've heard it a lot. And I went from hating it to loving it. I love the vocals back and forth. I think it's a really beautiful song. Does it fit immediately after Save Me? Probably not. But it is a great song. Um, so then if you cut out individual pieces kind of of just listening to Nuno he goes from uh, my heart is in a hurricane Gary says some stuff and then he says is this the storm before the calm oh just I don't like again you got to be in like a different mood for it but if you look at the lyrics and listen to like what just each person is saying separately and kind of not think of it as one there's new messages in it and i think it's an extremely beautiful song and i've grown to really really like it right all right now track 10 x out x out hey that's kind of genius i just realized it's track 10 and the roman numeral for 10 is x I see what you guys did there. <laughs> I didn't glue in until just now. That's pretty cool. Uh, and this is the other industrial-like sound, uh, song on the album. Um, and this time it incorporates like synthesizers and all that stuff. Um, it's another one that had me puzzled upon my first listen. I'm like, man, this to tonally, this album is all over the place. But again, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Uh, second and third listen, I'm a little more into it. Just a little. But again, I think that's going to be the case for a lot of stuff. It's just going to keep growing and growing on me. Uh, I'm still taking it back to the repetition. I'm still not a fan of the whole X out, X out, X out, X out <laughs> chorus. I'm like, that one is like, you talked about boring, repetitive. That one's annoying, repetitive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not a favorite on here, but also not a, it's not terrible. But yeah, that's all I have to say about X out. I feel about the same. I don't hate it. I think it's well placed after Hurricane. Since Hurricane was so slow, it feels faster than the mask, but I don't really think it is. And it's that same repetitive. The only thing that helps it is in the chorus, after they say X out, X out, Gary says a different word, which kind of helps, but not really. Um, the only other thing I have is it's very, this might offend, it's very like tool esque with the distortion at the start. Like yeah. sound, I'm not super familiar with tool, but it's like very distortion bass driven intro, right? I don't know, but I don't hate it. Don't love it. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Beautiful Girls, track 11. Now, this is the one that I have a bunch of notes for. And I'm just going to go flat out and say that this was the biggest disappointment for me on the album. And I say that because I was led to believe that this was going to be a Van Halen cover of their song, also titled Beautiful Girls. Thanks, Sammy Hagar. And I say that because Sammy Hagar had Nuno and Gary on his show, the Rock and Roll Road Trip. This is like almost a year ago. And, you know, no singles had come out at this point. Nobody knew about the new album. And they're showing Sammy the tracks, like the, the, the MP3s on, the, on uh, Nuno's computer. And then Sammy goes, hey, beautiful girls, that's the name of Van Halen, Van Halen song. And they don't really, they're, they're just like, oh, okay, well, we're going to make you listen to it. And then it just kind of goes blank. And they're like, oh, for Sammy's ears only. So they don't really confirm or deny. So I thought, it's going to be a Van Halen cover. It's going to sound amazing. I was hearing it in my head. Like. <laughs> really? Yeah. Come on. You don't think they'd hype that up a lot? What's that? You don't think they'd hype that up a lot if they were covering Van Halen? Well, that's what I thought. I I, I don't know. It, it, it seemed to appear, or maybe, I guess I just misunderstood, but man, it seemed to, they made it sound like it was going to be a Van Halen cover. And I was hearing You're not it. covering my song. <laughs> anyway, so I guess, I, I, man, I guess I was just uh, hopeful. It was wishful thinking, probably. But man, that night, this was last Friday. The album came out. I was listening to it. I was laying in bed that night, headphones on, song after song. I was looking for it. There it is. Van Halen 2. I was looking forward to it. Track after track. I'm like, here it comes. X out. And here we go. It's time. 
and beautiful girl begins. And my immediate thought is, what the F is this? <laughs> like, again, it's just, it's, am I on a tropical island all of a sudden? Is it like 1997 and I'm a teenager? Because that's obviously the demographic of this song. I, again, I had some bitterness. I had some bitterness, okay? I was expecting, but it's, it's such a, this song doesn't fit at all. In my opinion, on the album, it doesn't fit. the The tone is just off. It's um, you know, it's on me. I, I misunderstood. Wishful thinking was going to be a cover that would have sounded amazing, but yeah, I, I do not. I have a, a strong bitterness toward this song. I don't. I do not care for it at all. That that's all I'm going to say. That's all. I'm gonna say. My least favorite. Now, Easily. Here we're going to make some more people mad, and by we I mean me. <laughs> Put the intro of this song on for the first 10 seconds and then go put on Drive By by Train. They're the, okay. they're the exact same song. What is that? How do you use a stupid thing anyway? <laughs> this is what happens when I interrupt viewers. What is there that? It is. This, is, <laughs> this is my zapper. <laughs> train it i <laughs> swear put on drive by by train and then this back to back just the intros they're note for note the identical song really like, uh, they're exactly the same i don't know how they didn't and maybe they'll get sued i don't know but it's the same however i pulled the van halen out of the song it took some listens but i got it so it's called beautiful girls First of all, it should have been the last song in the album because that's where it was placed on Van Halen 2. It would have just been like the homage thing. But it gives like end of a different kind of truth vibes with like this more sped up, weird, not rock thing. But you get into like the Stay Frosty and like that stuff at the end of a different kind of truth. It's similar. Then you get at the very end of the song, they do like the kissing smooch sound. Yeah. That's the exact same as the Van Halen thing. So yeah. you could have ended the albums the same. So there's definitely some Van Halen love in this song. It's not a cover. After I listened to it, I wish it was because it's not amazing. It's different. But I feel like if they wanted to, they should have put it as the last song had the kissing thing sound be the end and you could have played your whatever also in the song at one point they say small town beautiful butterfly i don't know if that's a callback or they just couldn't find anything to rhyme but it's in there that's all i got i'm not even going to talk about the song outside of van halen and the train comparisons but i know i gotta i'm gonna put it on for tim after this i know what it sounds like <laughs> it's identical it's I'm, I'm gonna go listen. I'm gonna go listen and to it. Just, just, just pop in real quick. If anybody's irritated by me walking around the background, it's my channel. <laughs> so, no, but Nuno uh, in the credits writes a very heartfelt uh, thing about Eddie Van Halen. Uh, I don't know if Matt and I talked about that in the first time or not. Um, I'll have to wait till this comes out too. But yeah, there's definitely. Uh, a Van Halen thing. And that Sammy Hagar thing uh, on his road trip was very cool because they teased that they were going to cover a Van Halen song, but what they ended up doing was Won't Get Fooled Again with Sammy, Gary, and Nuno, which was pretty cool. But yeah. anyway, that's all. We got one more song to talk about, and you guys are doing great. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. So now we close up the album with track 12. Uh, a song called Here's to the Losers. And I, I just, I wrote down that I thought it was an unfortunate closer, uh, you know, because like Will said, Beautiful Girls could have closed the album. I think that would have fit well uh, as far as sequencing goes. Uh, the album didn't do much for me. And I, I'm sorry to end on such a sour note. I'm not trying to be negative at all, uh, but I think <laughs> I'm still going back to my first listen and Beautiful Girls pissed me off so much that by the time Here's the Losers came on, I was like, I'm done. I'm done, <laughs> you know? but now again, second listen, third listen. Is the song still, I don't know, doesn't do much for me. Um, 
maybe a little more energetic song to close the album or you know if they would have put like i mentioned like uh other side of the rainbow maybe like but i don't know this song that's it doesn't do much for me that's it this song sucks yeah, there this we go song okay. is terrible you're allowed <laughs> to say it this song is horrendous boy look at the time throw this <laughs> song in the garbage delete it off the album beautiful girls be the end and it'll be over all i wrote down i don't know if you can see this this is my notes here it is. The worst song. <laughs> it's terrible. Not even the worst song of the album. It's the worst song they've ever done. They put a top 10 song ever on this thing, and they closed it with the worst song they could have ever wrote. And it sucks. It's terrible. I skip it. I shut the album off. I will. I refuse to listen to this thing ever again. It's terrible. I'm going to end it with that. It sucks. Wow. It's this so is what bad. I, this is what I like about doing a show with Will. I can sugarcoat it and be like, it, you know, it doesn't do much for me. And then he'll just say flat out what I'm thinking. It's no. just... <laughs> You're allowed to say it. It's terrible. Extreme. Like, You're, they're probably not watching this video. They're not going to know. Still a big fan. This song, though, horrendous. This song is terrible. Right. Okay. Wow. So, so wow. I'm curious, how much would you give this? How much would you rate the album out of five stars? <sighs> Four, six. Four? 4.6. 4. Like oh, okay. I, I, I didn't really three. like it. There's some bad, yeah. there's this, some bad spots. I just you... want to add, this is the other thing I love about having Will on here because he can make it sound like he hates an album and still give it a really high rating. I, yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's funny. It, it's like, <laughs> it's funny. No, this is, this, uh, this is great. Uh, uh, you guys will see, we've never actually done a show like this before. We're split in half. Matt and I have very, some similar, but very different opinions on some of the tracks. And Period. Will's choice for favorite song blew everybody's guess out of the water. So I like this album more than Punchline. I probably like this album more than Sod Ads. I definitely like this album more than Three Sides. I know that's a hot take, but I just don't care for that album. So yeah, this is the third best extreme album. There's some terrible stuff on it. One song in particular. If we cut that song off, this album is a 4.6. If you make me listen to the last track, it's like a 4. It's a 4. Okay. But I'm ignoring the last song. That song is dead to me. It's a 4.6. <laughs> I have put down a 3.5, but when I think back of everything we said, it's, it's a good album. I, I'd raise it to a 4. I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5. because it's, it's nice to have Extreme back. They really gave it their all. They, they gave us variety. The only... The biggest problem I had with it was sequencing, as, as we discussed. I think it, the tracks could have laid, been laid out differently. But yeah. if you just look at the tracks, for the most part, they're very favorable. Uh, they're, uh, there's a lot of good stuff on here. So I'm just glad to have Extreme back. And you've only listened three times. I've listened closer to 15. Right. Yeah. And it does grow. The first time I listened to it, it took me a few more days before I'm like, let me try this again, knowing the video is coming. So give us more listens. It will get better, but the last song won't. <laughs> one thing, one thing I think we can all agree on is that we hope it's not another 15 years before Extreme Seven. Yeah, you know, sure. give us a give us an album two three years from now, guys. Um, I think the response to this is proving that we missed you, no matter what we might say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, this guys, this is great. Um, I really enjoyed sitting back. And letting you guys take over, knowing how Matt and I already rated the album. Incidentally, we couldn't get all four of us together at the same time, which is why we did it this way. But um, I really wanted all four of us on the episode because Extreme's a band that we're kind of all um, fans of. Even though, like, we kind of threw Extreme at will really quickly when that the Porn Graffiti Live album came out, and he, you know, he hit the ground running another Van Halen reference and, uh, and got up to speed on it. So, and I have to say, I never thought of the whole state frosty, different kind of truth thing before. Um, the, the beautiful girls sounds like the type of song that David Lee Roth might do on one of his solo albums too. I don't just mean California girls. I mean, like his solo albums are kind of, you know, they're not like Van Halen necessarily. Um, and the other thing is that I always forget that stay frosty. Isn't the last song. 
on a different kind of truth. Right. And then Pete Workin comes after it. It's like, oh, yeah, right. This song, too. I feel like we've had the same conversation with yeah, we're Stay getting Frosty some, could have fit at the end. Deja Vu all over again. Well, I think the reason they didn't put Stay Frosty on at the end is because it was it would invite too many comparisons to Ice Cream Man, which was the last song on the first album. True. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely made with a lot of Van Halen, you know, in mind. Uh, I mean, it, it's so funny because when people talk about the Van Halen comparisons, it's always about Nuno, right, as a guitar player. And it's almost an afterthought that, by the way, your singer sang on a Van Halen album. Exactly. That's hot exactly. takes for another time. But anyway, um, guys, thank you for doing this. And uh, I'll see if I can edit this to make it some uh, some sort of make some sort of sense. And yeah, Extreme Six, go get it, pick it up, like it, love it, learn it, give it give it a high review like Will did. And Jax, there you go, the boys, <laughs> yeah. uh, steady lineup, which is another cool thing. Yeah, guys, we'll see you all again. Thanks for watching Tim's Vinyl Confessions. <laughs>